halftime final match of the day here. Day two of the preseason for the Overwatch League. I'm your host, Chris Puckett. And once again, I am joined by Hex and Monte Cristo. Let's break down all of our first half action between Boston Uprising and the New York Excel. And I want to start with the discussion on the different players in the different roles. First off, Monty, let's talk about the tanks. When you look at the different Winstons, who do you feel has the advantage? Are you going with the Boston players or what you've seen from New York? I did like what we saw from Gamsu. I think that when Boston was doing well, it was because he was landing a lot of the kills and cleaning up these fights, but he just doesn't have the same level of talent around him that we see on New York. So it, it is a bit hard to tell, but I do think in an, in an isolation, Gamsu did perform well. How is Janice doing on the opposite side for New York? I, I, I think he's synergizing well with his team. No major complaints about Janus. Uh, he's a known quantity. He's been a great, great tank for a long time. All right, uh, let's talk about the DPS a little bit. We've seen Tracer in quite a few games today. Hex, who has the better Tracer today, and how do they stack up across the board? I don't think it's fair to necessarily say that Sabiobi is a better Tracer, but Sabiobi was... Sabiobi is... <laughs> I was going to finish, but <laughs> Sabiobi was the better Tracer for sure. But I think wh what I'm saying is it's a lot of it is the team around you where you don't have those openings and you're getting focused down. He had like a 45% weapon accuracy on Tracer, which is ridiculous just because uh, it's kind of a, a you know, spray and pray kind of character but he wasn't getting all the damage done that Sabiobi was I think striker we will see as one of the bright spots there are some bright spots on this Boston roster all right well we didn't get a chance to see too much of striker we were watching a lot of players here with 12 competing all at once how does striker rate right now in your eyes Monty there was a lot of hype when we talked to some of the other coaches that weren't even representing his team they said good things about striker coming in I I mean, he d I agree with Hex. He did look like a bright spot, especially I thought he was defending well on the first point of Dorado, which Boston nearly full held. So there, when you see Striker, I think, goes as the rest of this team goes and a very limited sample size. And of course, we are going to see some probable roster changes or roster movements over the course of the preseason and the regular season. But I think that when I look at Boston, I see a team that's still trying to diversify strategically because when they are doing something that works, as we saw in some of these games, they can push it through. But if that thing breaks down, then they don't have any other backup plans. So they're very one dimensional. They look practiced in a strategy. But if that strategy starts to go wrong, then everything else just falls down with it. I think ahead, part yeah. of that has to be the communication, too. I mean, we're talking specifically about Dorado, where we got a little bit bamboozled. It looked like they were going to hold first. Dream Casper was getting a lot of kills on his Soldier 76. But once that first point defense cracked, it cracked all the way to last. And they never really regrouped. Even on last, the supports weren't together. They both got bladed at different times. So a lot of that is communication to reset and to be able to get a better defense going but we also saw it on anubis because you could see over the course of the map as we saw multiple attacks from each team that there was really only one defense that was truly working on point a for boston and even then the positioning was the same for the genji you see dream casper off to the left side of the entrance and the first time he gets a kill on the pine pines widowmaker pine gets revived he literally just stands at that same place I'm tries to you. pop back up and then four people jump on him and kill him. And then they take the point. And then the next reset on the next attack, Pine is just waiting for him by himself. Dreamcapster is in exactly the same position, pops out, instantly dies, and that's the end of the match. Well, speaking about Pine, guys, let's jump into some of the highlights. Going back to Dorado, we saw the final hold, and it started with the Widow play. Now, up top, Pine had a little bit of an escort. Both tanks were with him. Had to drop down, and you see very little help. Goes right back into the power position, but he wasn't the only one stalling out the point. You were commenting from what we saw from the Tracer player. Monty, across the board, how strong was New York Excel on this Dorado map? I think you can just see that they're more used to a variety of different strategic scenarios that they find themselves placed in. Because when the tables, uh, you know, when we saw the defense coming through, it only they only got the cart, they, they got full held, right? So they're coming in, but even though they had already gotten picked off in the fight before that, it was saved you'll be delaying the cart, which allowed everybody else to get back in, which allowed them to full hold. So they have, they're thinking like, 30 seconds ahead and what they can do to stall as much as possible and you you just aren't seeing that same level of foresight from boston well going into anubis this is late in the game as you can see new york on their final attack and pine really opened this one up this is the play you were talking about 
Yeah, this is what Monty was talking about. The same thing was happening on Dorado, too, where Pine would just set up a perch, and then they only send Dream Casper after him. And Dream Casper wasn't really mixing it up. Pine could count down the seconds of when he was going to be there, when he was going to attack. And then even if he did get in trouble, then he would have his Mercy come back. Then Libero just went off, gets 3k here. And like what did we think about Li Libero today? He's playing Zenyatta. The he has some weird trances, I have to say. Oh, yeah. Definitely, especially on Dorado. He got pressured down, and someone who plays more Zenyatta would have just eaten it and, like, yeah. I'm going to die here. But he was, you know, he's kind of new to the role, so it's fine. But it, uh, going back to that point A attack, it just got easier every time because you could see how the New York team was adapting. Uh, it, they decided that Pine could just handle himself because there wasn't ever going to be a dive that wasn't only the Genji. So everybody else was playing back on the point. The Sombra, we saw it over and over and over again. There wasn't any variation. So once they were figured out, they just fell faster and faster. So it seems Boston is definitely going to need to put in a little bit more time before the regular season, but their initial attacks or their initial defensives seem to be pretty strong. So looking forward to map three, looking forward to map four. If you're looking for particular issues to address and to fix, what do you want to see them fix going into this next map? I think you just need more comps to run on some of these points. You need more variation because good teams who have a lot of experience are going to be able to see through you and find the counters necessary just to bully you over. Hex, how does Boston get back in this? I, I think you you find your bright spots and you really clutch on them. And it was for me, it was, it was Neko, it was Gamsu, and it was Striker, and you go with that. And then you also, you let Dream Casper play something different. I think maybe his Genji is not his, his best moment. If you're going to use that only to counter the Widowmaker, send someone with him. It became you unfair. You can't solo pressure yeah, that it, Widow. It became really hard to watch, so maybe let him run his 76. That was the hero he was on when they were having the very good Dorado defense. All right, final question for you both. You just have one word to answer this. Give me a player from New York Excel to watch going into game three. The, the crowd answered. <laughs> Sammy Olby's the man to watch. The game is ready to go. Let's send it over to our casters one more time. It's Mitch, a.k.a. Uber, with Mr. X. Oh, I get an AKA now. That's kind of AKA. fun. All like, right. Oh, you want to know me a little bit better? Here's my, here's my first name. Okay, fair enough. All right, so the boys from the Empire State showing up pretty well. And I love that Monty pointed out on the desk, and, and this is one of the biggest strengths of Korean teams, by the way, once they're in a stable, I guess, in, uh, infrastructure and environment, like, for example, Apex, is that they figure you out. Every time they play against you, every half, you could see that even NYXL were making these adjustments. Good example is, yeah, not having, you know, Pine pocketed by Mercy anymore because they're like, oh, he could probably handle himself against Dream Casper. Yeah, they did a great job with those mid-game adjustments, something that Boston didn't really do a great job of. You know, Boston, you know, they had some interesting strats, though. They were able to, you know, try and bring out the Reaper. They haven't really played a ton of Mercy. And I think it's great, you know, you use this preseason, you know, in a real kind of competitive setting to see if some of these strats work. All right, let's uh, have a look forward for the rest of the series here. So, two maps already in favor to New York XL, and now it's going to be Oasis coming up. So, okay, so a map where there's an opportunity, it's a little bit more focused around the DMing aspect and the deathmatch aspect of Overwatch, where it's very much about getting those frags. And it, it's kind of nice because you can practice, I guess, the setup of a, of a, of a pure team fight. Positioning still going to be important here. Again, the raw skill of, of of NYXL is definitely going to be on display here. I definitely think there's going to be opportunities though for Boston to respond in kind. I reckon if there's any way they're going to be able to le level the playing field or at least have a you know a better leg up, it'll be here. Yeah, I think this is probably their chance to really make one of these games scrappy, steal one against New York. We'll see if uh, New York brings out any different you no know, comps. We were kind of talking. That's kind of a shame. Like Libro has to play the support role because he can play so many you no know, different things that could really put on a show for us. But you know, maybe they'll get creative in terms of supports what they decide to run. I remember I wrote once, uh, yeah, for for Red Bull about Libro being my player of the month uh, in that particular month back when he was on Meta Athena, and there were literally there was no less than like seven times in one map where he just made me gasp. It was a kind of player that was just, it was quite shocking what he could produce. And yeah, but you saw it, like he's three or 4K at the end of, of Temple of Anubis. There's not much this guy can't do. We talk about players being Swiss Army nice all the time, but I really think Libero takes that, uh, that, that statement, that phrase to the next level. And it's just a scary thing to go up against as a team because when he's in the game, you literally have no idea what he's going to pull out. <laughs> Look, it's really we don't. Like switching hero to game plan for. So looks like potentially we'll see Moira here. So. I feel like now he's just starting to show off, right? He's yes, like, that's it, Boston. Like, yeah, Into I'll the minds of Moira. Let's see what Libero can do with his close quarters, man. Obviously, you know, the biotic orbs are going to be quite impactful, whether used for healing or for damage. And, uh, you know, shielding, 
you can cut through that pretty comfortably there with Coalescence. Libero just does, will need to expose himself to Boston to be able to you know, keep his reserves for healing up. But it's gonna be fun to watch this in action. He just has to be careful, right, to not just drain out all those resources. She does so much healing, and you just love to put it down, right? But you gotta do some damage to give yourself some more resources here. It's, you know, it's gonna be Jonas getting pretty low. They're gonna heal him right back up, and you can see the damage that Moira can put down. You know, it's not a ton, right? But it's enough to just kind of scare players away. Libero again, keeping himself towards the backside of his team. And you can see that NYXL has been able just to walk their way on towards his point with quite a lot of confidence as well. Now they lost any players. Libero is very close already to a coalescence after the first fight. Savio being on the McCree, by the way. That's going to be something well worth looking out for. You know what he's been able to do in that pick? Big ult's coming up. Well, New York is pretty much running a comp where they're kind of like baiting Boston in to die for them, right? Because, you no, know, with the AoE healing from Lucio, you have, you no know, Libero on the Moira, where she's not really an AoE healer, but you can kind of just spray across and heal multiple targets. Now, you have Sable B, you know, able to just flash on these players coming in. Pine can blow it up as a Junkrat. So, you have a really good combination here from New York to deal with the dive that's going to come in from Boston. Yeah, Libero, again, just trying to keep his team healed up with them. I wasn't too worried about doing damage, but he actually got no up for he got desuited. But there it is. Libero out on his own. Very vulnerable. Kellex trying to give Savio to slip there, but the flash grenade is going to make sure he's held in place. Savio will be there as well. He knew he couldn't get part of the fight, but he just wanted to fan the hammer on the shield just to get a bit of extra damage. May help his team out. Pine comes in. Riptire claims Gamsu there. Not the tire swing he was hoping for, I'm pretty sure. And Savio is cut down by Neko. Boston Uprising take control of the point. A very chaotic fight. And NYXL, to be fair, were very split there. You could see a multiple different player perspectives, but you couldn't see where any of their teammates were. And New York did use both support ults. They used the Rip Tire, used a Deni as well. So a lot of ults invested into that fight for New York. They do have a Graviton Surge. They do have an Earth Shatter here coming in the next fight. Oh, if Dream Casper can make anything happen with this Dragon Blade as Sabio B makes quick work of Striker. That's what I like to see at pretty long range as well. Striker walk pretty much into that one. And notice that Sabio will be there. Sonic's hitting him from behind. He realizes it's a Winston. He knows he can't do anything about it right now. He's just trying to focus on other targets. Graviton Surge being used. Sabio B baits the Winston back into that one. Gamsu had no choice but to get sucked into the grab. Now Sabio B again trying to stick as much behind Janus as possible. Oh, he's rolled into a pulse bomb. Striker's gotten double his money for that one. And he's going to even find Janus to finish things off. Nice fight there for the Boston Uprising, but Striker definitely broke the back of NYXL. Yeah, the grab came out from New York. Not able to get really anything from it. Striker with the pulse bomb makes a big impact. And Nico on the side of Boston. Gonna get that transcendence. You have Note with the self-destruct here. See if Boston can pull on to the point. It's, you know, 67% and counting. See if maybe Janice can land a big Earth Shatter. Yeah, Janice set up with the rest of his team in the side room. So using the shield just to shepherd them on towards the point. Striker realizes that he has an opportunity to maybe get a bit of a sidestab or a backstab at that rate. But it's going to be a transcendence for Boston. And Striker knows he can get a little bit closer now. It's going to be a little bit easier. More of a margin of error with that extra healing being available. The entirety of Boston just barrel themselves forward and try and jump into the face of NYXL. But Savior we gets enough space here to get two kills, or at least one kill in a D suit, should I say. But having note outside of the mech is pretty important. Neko sends a couple of orbs after Savior and they do claim him. NYXL need to contest his point now, but it's only Ark and Pine to come forward. Sound barrier for two plays, but fine, immediately, Pine immediately finds note there with that with the remote mine. The Riptide doesn't really get too much. Pine was hoping to get a multi-kill off that one to keep his team in this one. Janice is going to charge straight into the Primal Rage, Winston. And unfortunately, all he can do is hold him up for a moment. Yeah, Pine actually got a Zarya barrier when he was trying to use that rib tire, but still just so low on HP, not able to do much to stay alive. New York trying to make this interesting on the point. Sabio B just you know, darting in and out from the players here of Boston. Overtime clicking down, not gonna make it back to the point. It'll be Boston taking our first point here. So the reason why I said that, that there was an opportunity for Boston to find a potential map here is I, I really feel like Maps like control maps tend to equalize any sort of gaps between the sort of team cohesion or teams playing together for a long time. Because the set plays on these, there aren't as many opportunities for set plays, right? You're always playing around the same kind of topography, the same archaeology, or you're like the uh, same architecture, right? So yeah. you're always attacking the same point. And again, it's just a matter of sort of trying to fight, win out, get good healing, get value reses, pick off important targets. More of a fundamental brand of Overwatch is being played here, and that's definitely not where somewhere where Boston are actually lacking. Wow. They're strong in that regard. It's maybe the extra stuff on top that they need time to work on. So this is a good map for them to bring back. 
I think I uh, know when you play a control map, you have like a kind of set strategy going into a fight, right? But things fall apart pretty quick. Like it just becomes like a death match all over the place. We'll see the Fara Mercy bring Fauna out from both sides here as uh, Libero will play the Fara. Yeah, more importantly now, Pine going to that support role as I kind of hinted at at the start of the game. So both these players are capable of it. So Pine didn't really fancy playing the Fara, leaving that in the hands of Libero, but Dream, Casper, and Node are the first two to strike blood there. Mako doesn't spend much time on the map, and Kellex gets a nice double. Pine getting booped off the edge. Good start with Boston Uprising, maintaining the momentum they build off with a very well fought out first stage. And Stryker put down a ton of damage in that first fight, already 84% towards his Pulse Bomb. Take a look at a replay here from Kellex's POV, who's you know, played a decent amount of Lucio in this, this series thus far. And you see the movement there, you know, able to just switch between you know, the healing and the speed to give his team a little bit of an extra boost. Right, Boston now, noting gaps are a little bit low on HP. They've taken a heck of a lot of damage from the first salvos of NYXL. Casper, yeah, he's definitely going to be looking for Libero here. First shot connects, second one doesn't quite. He needs one more, and he gets it. Just a punch for good measure, but that's going to do the job. In the meantime, though, Note does get desuited. Casper will have an opportunity to go for a barrage here, but Mecco chases him down. And even if he survived that push, Mecco still would have been in the suit to cancel out most of the rocket damage anyway. Striker now wants to stall. That's all Boston can do for the moment. Get bodies on towards the point. Slow down NYXL. Gum them up as they're trying to gain a little bit of momentum of their own. And Boston are going to get themselves 50% on this point before they even lose their first fight. Oh yeah, there's this great stall coming in from Boston. It'll be a self-destruct that comes down. Gamsu's going to use the Primal Rage. And that's going to force Ark to use his Valkyrie here. Both teams using the Valkyrie in this fight. Pine does have that sound barrier for New York. We'll see if they decide to use it. The sound barrier comes down here from Boston. Then neither power gets very much for the barrage value, and Ark's gonna get a double resurrect. So Libero and Pine are back up on their feet. Pine manages to get himself the sound barrier there. Casper's not able to take him out in midair. A good turnaround for New York Excelsior, but my god, it's taken a heck of a lot of time to do so. 76, 77%? And now they're going to try and hold. NYXL used a lot of ultimates in that fight as well. Yeah, Boston gets about an extra, you know, 30% from that stall and then forces New York to use virtually all of their ults there. So, you know, not a bad trade. You are Boston here. You do lose the point. That is this map in a nutshell, to be honest. Their first fight on maps that are easy to stall is, is always going to give you a huge advantage. There's actually a fight going on right now. We'll cut to it here. Libero looking for Dream Casper. It might be a bit of a turnaround of what we saw last time. One rocket connects. Casper's not getting any healing right now. His mercy's elsewhere, maybe tending to more infirmed targets. But Libero wasn't able to finish Casper off at the moment. With Mecco and Pine falling, imagine if Libero finds Casper there as well, cleans him up really quickly, then he can focus on the ground targets. He spent so long with his head in the clouds, literally and figuratively speaking, that Boston can flip it back. They've got point control. They're also close to a few key ultimates. And Note just made a fantastic play. He sees the Far Mercy up in the sky, and he actually uses the Diva Flies right up and kind of like boops Ark away over the that really, you know, high ledge there. And he's not able to get back to Libero with the Guardian Angel. He's able to kill him, then Libero Bro dies on the point. Janice immediately onto the point, doesn't actually connect with the target where the jump just kind of has to be a body in the vicinity. Patience for Libero, but it's not paying off right now. Three missed rockets, the fourth just grazes his target, but Dream Casper gets out to fight another day. Libero's probably looking for an opportunity to use a barrage here. One shot on towards Casper, he's low as well. One rocket would get the job done, and Casper is the first man on the trigger. Libero falls down, and also Savio is caught up there. Dream Casper takes down both DPS players there on that Farah. Huge turnaround. Boston make it a real game. It's two to one. Extremely impressed with how Boston came out there on control. They get a map win under their belt, has to feel good, right? A lot of pressure on these guys, you know. I know a lot of people talking, you know, well, maybe Boston's gonna be the worst. And then we come in, you know, we're meeting with all the teams, we're like, hey, look out for Boston. Boston's been playing quite well. You know, they have a coaching staff that really believes in this squad that they put together. And you can see they can be a very competitive team. And perhaps now, as we look on at some of these matchups, we're starting to realize what some of these Korean coaches were trying to tell us before this preseason started, saying that, you know, the gap maybe isn't that big between these two teams. We're seeing it now. The gap's only one map so far. We might even have a five-map series if Boston can bring it out. We'll find out if that's going to be a thing after the break.